Hey everyone, today we're gonna to take a look at a 2020 Lexus NX. Now the NX fits into the Lexus SUV lineup between the UX and the RX. The RX is really the core of Lexus's SUV brand and since it's kind of a small mid-size SUV, everything else has to kind of shrink to, to fit below it. So therefore the NX is a small compact SUV and the UX is a, a very small subcompact. So anyway, I know that's a little bit wonky, but I think the, the, the lesson to be, to be learned from this rambling is that the NX is pretty small for a compact. It kind of straddles that territory between compact and subcompact. Other than that though, I really kind of like this thing. Um, I've seen some reviews that have called it a little bit uninspired and, and boring to drive. And while it certainly isn't a performance SUV, uh, I found the powertrain to be pretty reasonable. I don't mind it at all. Other than that, the styling I think is styling subjective, but in my opinion, um, I don't find it too offensive. I know Lexus's design language is a little controversial. Uh, and other than that, I, I've, I've really enjoyed it. Other than it being just a little bit on the small side. So we'll take a look at the exterior, then the interior, and then I will give you some of my final thoughts on the NX. Starting up front here, you can see that the NX kind of has a long nose. We'll look at it from the side profile. You can see there's a pretty long front overhang on this thing uh, that could throw off the proportions a little bit. I think the Lexus design team has done a pretty good job of designing around that. Up front, you see you've got the trademark Lexus Predator grille. I don't think it looks too bad on this vehicle. Uh, I think the headlights are also pretty tasteful. Obviously, they're this two-element design. You have the check mark beneath, which I don't think is really necessary, to be honest. Um, I, I do like the shape of this headlight design right here. I think it looks sophisticated and ultimately I think it's one of the stronger design areas of this vehicle. Uh, moving along the side you can see that there are a lot of angular shapes in this thing uh, and I think they all kind of come together to make it look pretty interesting. A little bit of black cladding around the wheel wells, not as egregious as on some vehicles like the new Mazda CX-30. I, I like to see that Lexus has used a little bit of restraint with the black cladding. Same as on the rocker panel down there. A little bit, not too much. I think it all comes together nicely. You can see the taillights have this black design element to them. Uh, that's a little unique. I don't mind it. I wouldn't call this the most beautiful compact SUV on the road, but nor, nor would I call it the, the ugliest. Moving around back, it's pretty slabby in the back here. And by that I mean not a lot of variation of depth, just kind of whoosh right off there. So this is an NX300. There's also an NX300H, which is a hybrid. This one's not a hybrid, and it has the F Sport package. So a little sportier. The grill up front is mesh. You get different wheels, and I want to say some different body cladding. And then uh, it's a little bit sportier on the inside, but we'll get into that in a minute. So I am not offended by the design of the NX, and based on some of Lexus's designs in recent years, I think that, uh, I don't know, that speaks volumes. I don't think it's too bad. I don't mind it. I'll give you a look at the cargo area before we move inside here. Power tailgate, that is optional on this. And here's where you can tell that the NX is kind of small. So not the deepest cargo area in either regard. Not super deep this way. Floor is pretty high. Uh, I think a lot of people will like this high load floor. Makes it easy to get things in and out. You can see it kind of... My knee is down there. You know, so for maybe a shorter person, this is pretty convenient height to reach in and out. Uh, Lexus first aid kit, as usual, this is kind of a clever feature. I know a lot of cars have these nets, but you can put this net up here, hook it around there, and then you can stash things in here. Like I was bringing some groceries home the other day, and I just put them in here to keep them from falling over. So convenient little feature, just an accessory. Oh, you get a little pull tab here too, so you can pull it out to put things in it. 
Cargo cover back here. It's always nice to see in a vehicle so you can throw things like purses and other valuables back here and not have to worry about uh, someone seeing them and being tempted to break into your vehicle. We'll close the tailgate here. And now we'll move inside. Okay, climbing behind the wheel of the 2020 Lexus NX300. Start it up. So the NX is pretty familiar inside, if you've ever been in a modern Lexus. Uh, we've got really high quality materials. So this is, this is kind of a, almost a hard plastic. It's really cold outside, so everything feels a lot harder than it probably is in normal weather. But uh, this is, it's, it's not a hard plastic, but it's not the softest surface either. Moving on, you have this aluminum look weave Again, it's not cushy leather. I think it's like a leather wrapped plastic right here. This is leather wrapped with a little bit of foam padding in it. Not a ton. One thing I have noticed about this vehicle and I just washed it so we're gonna get those awful streaks on the window but I still wanna show you this. Window operation is super, super silent. Ready? I'm gonna turn the radio down. Here we go. So it starts really quietly and it goes down into the door frame even more quietly. It's like a damped, it's like damped from the point where it's right here. I'll show you again. One touch, which is nice. It slows down at the top and bottom of the operation. Ready, one more time. And it slowed down right there. So it's a little touch, uh, something you get with Lexus um, that I think is to be appreciated. Dashboard, again, this is like that leather wrapped plastic, soft touch rubber up here. Uh, as equipped, this vehicle's $51,000 and it is fully loaded. So I think at higher price points, you'd maybe get a nicer dashboard here. Um, comparing this thing to the Mazda CX-5, I do feel like materials in the CX-5 are a little bit nicer. Uh, it's hard to speak to longevity with a new vehicle. Um, I think that long-term Lexus probably comes out ahead with regard to at least perceived reliability and uh, you know, I know I know that matters a lot to a lot of buyers but I do like the CX-5's interior a little bit more than this anyway the center stack here is a little bit different for Lexus you can see that it kind of incorporates their beloved L-shaped design elements here where you get it cuts in real hard and then it comes out again uh, this part sticks out a little bit, but it's actually pretty nice. It's pretty functional. I like it because I can put my elbow on the center console here and use the controls right here. So I don't have to have my arm floating. And it's just a little thing that, that makes the vehicle a little bit more comfortable. Um, HVAC controls right here. You've got heated and ventilated seats on this model. I've got the heated seats turned way up. Ventilation, temperature controls, hazards here. One thing that I think Lexus really needs to get away from is this stupid clock right here. I, I, I don't I don't know who wants the clock anymore, Lexus. And, and it's more difficult to read than a simple digital clock. And it just looks out of place in this otherwise very modern design. I hope that next generation Lexus products drop the clock. And what's even more frustrating is that it's the only clock on the center stack. You can go to the home screen on the infotainment system. Well, there's not really a home screen on this infotainment system, which I'll get into in a minute. But you can see that they don't include a digital clock on this, which is just really, really frustrating. Luckily, there's a clock somewhere in the center gauge cluster. Just trust me, there's a clock there. But yeah, right now, as we sit, further to my point, there we go. There's a clock right there. But nowhere on the center stack is there a digital clock. And when you have a digital screen right here, a really nice digital screen, I must add, um, it's completely inexcusable to not include a digital clock somewhere on this screen. So that's a big frustration. And uh, it's even more frustrating given that it's a digital screen. You can put whatever you want up here. Just little things like that seem to kind of be overlooked and 
Yeah, that's something that you can say with a lot of modern Lexuses with regard to technology. It just really isn't there. Uh, and that brings me probably to my biggest gripe about this thing is this infotainment system is super frustrating to use, especially in a $50,000 luxury car. So you can see it operates via this touchpad right here that you can swipe with. It clicks, but what's just most frustrating is that it's really touchy, and I've said this about other Lexus products. It takes a while to get used to. See, I skipped twice there. I thought I was just moving once each time. See, that was twice. Didn't mean to. I'll try to go to apps. So if you touch it really gently, you do eventually get the hang of it, but it's just confounding. There's no real home screen. Uh, this is the closest thing you have to a home screen is this row of icons along the bottom. It's just frankly it's a mess the screen itself is really nice it's really high resolution uh, when you look at the map uh, the map looks old it's really dated uh, but the screen itself is pretty good contrast is nice colors look good uh, resolution orientation even the positioning of the screen is nice it's it's in your line of sight I know a lot of people criticize these floating iPad uh, design elements when it comes to screens but I really don't mind them they allow the dashboard to overall be lower while keeping the screen up in in your line of sight so so I I really don't mind them I think the alternative would be to have a really high dashboard right here and that just wouldn't work for for visibility nor would it look good from a design standpoint so uh, I like the screen in the physical sense hate it from a software and uh, operating system standpoint Moving on, this steering wheel is pretty familiar. To me, though, these buttons don't really mesh with the rest of the vehicle. This is Lexus's kind of standard steering wheel, and the NX is a more modern Lexus design. So just uh, little styling choices. I don't know. The steering wheel kind of feels out of place. I like the design. I like this uh, kind of pewter aluminum finish here. But like the chrome here, there's in this vehicle, there's chrome around these buttons on the window controls, but you'll see that there's no chrome anywhere else, except for in really subtle areas. Some chrome there. It just feels out of place. There's a lot of different surfaces in this thing. The F Sport model comes with these sporty seats. They're not super aggressive, but I do like the bolstering. It manages to feel sporty, and it does kind of hug you in, but they're not super firm sport seats by any means. Probably the NX's biggest interior quirk is right behind the infotainment touchpad here. Uh, in most Lexuses, you get this little wrist pad right here for using the infotainment system, but what's kind of weird about this one is what lies behind it. You can pull on this little tab here, and out comes a mirror. And the NX comes with a removable mirror. I wonder what this thing costs on the Lexus parts catalog. Yeah, the NX mirror. It just sits in here, too. It slots in. Just kind of drop it in. There you go. So, yeah, we'll leave it at that. You can make of that what you want. Cup holders, fine. You do get a couple different driving modes. I don't know why you need two different sport modes in a uh, Lexus subcompact SUV, but you get them. Stability power parking brake here that has a hold feature. Pretty basic, you still get a CD player. That's kind of crazy, I just realized that. Volume tuning buttons are down here. Yeah, so decent interior layout that just has some typical uh, dated features, which are, are kind of typical of Lexus, but altogether it works, aside from this awful infotainment system. I think that about covers the front area though. Let's hop in the back and see what's back there. Okay, climbing into the back seat of the NX, and there's a decent amount of room. I am about 5'10", 5 5'11", 5 and I have the seat positioned where I would have it if I were driving right now. And you can see, decent knee space, about a finger length. Pretty good amount of foot room too, not a really high transmission hump right there. And it has a pretty flat floor back here, so it's not like you have your foot all the way down in this really deep foot well. It's pretty high, pretty much a flat plane back there. Other than that, design elements carry over. Uh, same textures and features as on the front door, so it's not like Lexus swapped out, uh, swapped in hard plastic back here, which is good to see. Same quality back here as there is up front. You know, 
circular speaker there. You do get vents back here, but there are not uh, individual controls. Um, here's your light. Pretty basic. Grab handles. Headrests are really thin. Uh, perforated leather. There is not a pass-through from the rear. Now, I transported some skis in this vehicle uh, this weekend, and it was a little bit difficult. I'd like to see some kind of pass-through right here. We had to put this seat down, which meant that our two backseat passengers had to sit right next to one another. Um, so, yeah, it was one of the drawbacks of this thing. It gets a little bit tight back here when you go to transport people and things. So, in that case, maybe you'd want to buy an RX if you had a lot of passengers, or if you were going to be transporting a lot of people often, or if you had needs for bigger cargo space. I think the RX would probably make a little bit more sense for you, but as a small compact SUV, the NX will certainly get the job done. I think that about covers it for the back seat. Let's climb up front and go over some final thoughts. Might as well take a look at the window sticker here. So this is a 2020 Lexus NX 300F Sport. The color is Atomic Silver. It's built in Japan. You can see that under the hood is a 235 horsepower, 2 liter turbocharged 4 cylinder engine paired with a 6 speed automatic. You're seeing fewer and fewer 6 speeds these days right off the top of my head. Uh, I know Mazda still uses a 6 speed and you've got the Lexus here. Total price on this thing is $51,000 and you can see that, yeah, it's an F Sport model so it has a few different features that come with the F Sport package there and then there are some individual packages too. It's got the adaptable suspension, it's got a nice panoramic camera system that gives you a top-down view of the vehicle which makes it really easy to park and then some other things here. Navigation system with 10 speaker audio, intuitive parking assist, premium F Sport package which gets you heated and ventilated front seats. This thing has a heated steering wheel which I've been using. So altogether you can see there are about fifty thousand or sorry, ten thousand dollars worth of options on this thing, which bring the price all the way up to that fifty-one thousand dollar mark. One area that's a little bit disappointing is fuel economy. Now next I know that Lexus makes a hybrid NX, and honestly, the powertrain in this thing isn't so great. It's not a really sporty driving experience, so I think I'd have to probably recommend the hybrid. Uh, because you, in the non-hybrid NX here, you don't get an incredible powertrain, and you certainly don't get great fuel economy. Uh, you can see that the EPA rates this at 22 city, 27 highway, and 24 combined. I've been getting 21, and that involves 254 miles of driving, and a good portion of that has been spent on the highway. So I'd say probably... 40 to 60 percent of that has been highway driving uh, you know call it 45 to 65 miles per hour uh, and yeah 21 mpg is pretty disappointing so i would probably opt for the hybrid in this vehicle um, because that non-hybrid powertrain isn't isn't really a big selling point of this thing um, so i think the hybrid is probably the nx at its best but anyway, there's your look at the window sticker and now for some final thoughts on the NX. Altogether, in the roughly 250 miles I've put on this thing, I found it to be pretty competent, pretty comfortable. Uh, you know, with any Lexus product, you're getting good overall refinement and good interior quality, which leads to excellent resale value, which, uh, you know, those are all things that should factor into a smart purchase decision, which I think ultimately most Lexus products are smart purchases. Uh, but that said, Lexus is kind of lacking with regard to technology. Um, this thing is loaded with active safety features. I know you even get things like lane centering and traffic sign recognition, which are indicative of kind of the new generation of active safety tech. Um, and I know that a lot of it comes standard. Uh, like I said on this one, you also have blind spot detection. Uh, top-down 360 degree camera which really isn't so bad the quality is pretty good actually but really when it comes to infotainment it's a little bit frustrating here the the native infotainment system is pretty weak that said uh, you do get Apple CarPlay and supposedly for 2020 Android Auto I haven't had the opportunity to check that out and it actually 
doesn't appear on the window sticker, which is odd, but I read online that this thing has Android Auto for 2020, so that's a nice addition. Um, so, you know, I guess I, I, I kind of countered a lot of what I said there. Uh, good safety tech, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, can't argue with that. Um, the, the infotainment screen is pretty nice, it's just that native infotainment system isn't so great. But other than that, this is a pretty comfortable and competent SUV. Uh, things I like about it most are, I think it looks pretty good. I, I don't mind Lexus's styling design language. Overall refinement is good. It's comfortable. Um, it's got pretty much all the features buyers want these days. Good safety, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. Those are two big ones for me. Uh, drawbacks are probably the powertrain in this non-hybrid NX leaves a little bit to be desired with regard to fuel economy. If it made like 270, 280 horsepower uh, and got 21 miles per gallon combined, I'd take it. But at 235 horsepower from a turbocharged four cylinder, 21 MPG is pretty rough. Um, and other than that, the size, it is a little bit small. Uh, you know, I think a comparable Mazda CX-5 is probably a better balance of size, price, and overall sophistication. Um, you know, I think if you want a bigger vehicle, you step up to the RX and you call it good. Uh, but I think, you know, size and fuel economy are probably the two main drawbacks to this vehicle. Everything else checks out, and I have really enjoyed driving it over the past week. As far as driving dynamics go, like I said, this isn't a real sporty SUV, uh, but it's comfortable. The nice thing about a uh, traditional six-speed automatic transmission is that you don't get a thrashy gear changes, it doesn't change gears all that often. Um, you know, maybe the fuel economy suffers a little bit, but the transmission is at least going to be familiar to most people. Um, again, inoffensive, I think that's kind of the main theme of the NX. Handling's fine. The ride's fine. I think the ride quality is pretty good. This thing does have an adaptive suspension. Do you really need an adaptive suspension in a small, compact luxury SUV? Probably not. But it's there. It drives small. Um, easy to drive. Easy to get around. I think it's probably good it's a good city vehicle, but it's also fine on the highway. Uh, you know, I wouldn't mind taking this vehicle on a road trip, provided you don't have a lot of things to bring with you. Acceleration's fine. I think 0 to 60 is in like 7 seconds. So it checks out. It checks out. It's fine. It's not a sport model, uh, nor do I think most buyers want it to be. It's simply a comfortable, familiar, reliable, dependable, reasonably attractive, compact luxury SUV.